Resident Lighting Specialist to Arc Residential to Mass Welcome to Residential Tech Talks. I'm Jeremy Glowacki, Executive Editor of Residential Tech Today. On this week's podcast, Jeff Shaw joins us from Petaluma, California, where he is Vice President of Product Management for NICE North America. Jeff and I met about a year ago at this time when NICE welcomed members of the trade media to their U.S. headquarters to meet with the team and learn about their product direction. I enjoyed getting to know everyone there and was excited about what they had in store for the coming year and many years ahead. Now it's less about rebranding and more about new products and we're getting ready for Cedia. So I thought I'd have Jeff on the podcast to give us a little pre-Cedia Expo update. Jeff Shaw, great to see you again. How's it going there? It's going good, Jeremy. Thanks for having me here. I'm happy to see you too. Happy to be on here and talk about our new stuff coming up. Uh, really excited to, to be at Cedia again and show everybody what we've got coming. Awesome. Well, we had Paul Williams on um, at the end of 2022, covered a little bit, uh, you know, refresher about what, what I'd seen there in person and what we talked about at Cedia. But there's been so much in just the past few months, um, June and July, and now in August of, of product launches and uh, things like that. But I want to first start off just a little bit with your background for folks that don't don't know you or know you, but don't know your uh, upbringing. Uh, I know you are kind of a San Diego guy. You went to college in San Diego, but did, is that where you were born and raised? Uh, well, sort of. I was uh, partially raised in San Diego. I'm actually originally from Mexico City, born there. Spent a few years there, spent some time in San Diego, and now I've moved a little further north up to the uh, San Francisco Bay Area, where I am now, in Petaluma, as you mentioned. So, um, but yeah, so um, yeah, I went to school in San Diego. My, my career uh, started here, um, it's now NICE. At the time, was Core Brands back in 2017. Um, started in as a product manager for a lawn and, and user interfaces uh, within actually that line, and, and over the years have developed into, uh, into this role, which I stepped into about two years ago. No, three years ago, actually. So three years ago, I've uh, been leading the, the charge here with uh, the control business at NICE, North America. Uh, prior to that, I was in education technology, kind of adjacent to what, I, what we, we do here as far as control and audio, uh, just kind of in the education space. So I did that for, for a number of years before I came to, to what was then Core Brands. Well, that's great. You, you gave us everything that I needed to know. I don't have any follow-up questions about your background. I think uh, I, I, my only question might be um, that, you know, folks get into tech for different reasons. And uh, it sounds like um, maybe it wasn't what you you studied. What um, Was it just a coincidence you ended up in tech or was there an interest there from an earlier age? There always has been. It's something that I've been I've been excited about my whole life, you know, doing things you know, back in when you know, my father was was into into that sort of thing. He used to build radios by himself, you know, on his own and, and back in the back in the day and kind of instilled that in in, uh, in me a little bit. And I'm um, always just been interested in tech and, and you know, before even joining this company, it's a hobby, a home control, home automation was a hobby for me. I was doing it already before I started with, with this industry or this business. And so it's always been fun. And it was, it's, it's funny because when I, when I came to work here, uh, you know, I thought, gosh, I get to come and, and, and play with toys all day long because that's how I saw it. And that's how I still see it. It's fun. It's all really fun stuff. I get excited by seeing, you know, new things coming and new things that, just to, to play with, honestly. And so um, I love it. It's a blast. And, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it any differently. Well, your headquarters there in Carlsbad, is, um, it is a big play area for sure. And there's some nice uh, demo spaces. And when we went down there or wherever you're from in the country, but it went over there from where I am, um, it was um, really last year about the branding of Nice North America and the announcement that you would be uh, sunsetting, as you said, some of these brands that had been acquired in the um, core brands, Nortec, control the different names of the parent company. Um, and so now you're starting to see the, the results of, of that rebranding, but also just product development. Um, start us off with the first announcement. La last year, there was a prototype for a remote control, which mm -hmm. is kind of a dying art getting that handheld remote. Um, that's not just a piece that comes with uh, a streaming device or something like that. But a lot of us still love having a good quality remote. Uh, I'm definitely one of those people. So 
you're getting close to shipping now. Is that correct? We are. We'll be shipping sh- shortly after CDM. We'll be shipping the, the new remote. Um, we're really excited about this. This is a, it's really an evolution of the remote. It's not, you know, we want to look at the remote control and how could we give it more value? How could we make it do more things? Um, not just do the same thing a remote has always done. And so we saw it as an extension of, of the system. So with that, we have added things like the ability to answer a video doorbell right on the remote. So if somebody rings the front door, you can pick up the remote and answer it from there. Um, it doesn't have video two-way, but you can do two-way audio and see the video from the doorbell um, and be able to interact directly from, from the remote. You know, one of the things about, you know, having, having the remote being there, you can, it's on the couch, it's actually picked up and, and it's right there. You don't have to, you know, go over to a touch panel or open up your phone or anything like that. So it makes it much easier. We've also added the ability to do intercom. So the the uh, the nice control system has the ability to intercom, of course, between different interfaces. So we can, from touch panel to touch panel, or from phone to touch panel, or or you know in between, the remote now also has that ability. So a user can call another station, can receive a call from from another station, and if the other station's video enabled, like the doorbell, then it can also display the doorbell or the excuse me, the video from that from that intercom station. So it's again, it's a unique. Um, uh, piece. We've also, uh, one of the things that's really important to our users is the ability to view their, their surveillance cameras. So with the remote, you can also view your surveillance cameras uh, from, you know, directly you can, you can scroll through the different cameras. And we've added a really unique feature on this phone, on this remote, excuse me. So it's the ability to use the, the display in the room, the TV, uh, to be able to display the video, but from the remote, you're actually controlling where you go on the on the NVR playback. So you're kind of using the two together. Um, so it's an extension of that remote, but rather than having to see it on a you know 3.2 inch screen, you want to see something. If you're reviewing footage on a on a uh, from a, from your NVR, you know you want to see it large and, and as big as possible. So display that up on the screen directly from the remote. You can control it. So it's really cool to be able to use this remote as a, as a full function user interface and not just you know, controlling uh, some subsystems that are available in the system, but really to, to be able to do everything you can do with, with any other user interface. It's, it's a walking touch panel, basically. So it's really, really, we're really excited about it. That takes it to another level for sure. Um, and, and you're touching on two areas that just seem to be so universal now with, the, not no pun intended with the remote, but uh, you, you've got uh, everyone even if you're just talking about uh, a ring doorbell is is com- comfortable and wants video of the exterior of their home and so you're be able, you're integrating that and then the intercom part of it uh, I've said this before if I could get rid of my uh, Amazon Alexa devices and replace with some other way to age my kids down to dinner I would do it because uh, you know they're that's pretty much what it was you know reduced to <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we we it's, it's such a fe- it's such a old fashioned feature the old paging you know intercom system it's right. been up to modern standards you know so that's great that you can, you, can you, you mentioned voice too that's another feature that we've added to this remote the ability oh. to use it for voice control so so yeah. um, right now out of the box it it works with Alexa you mentioned Alexa um, so you can you can control the home uh, you can ask questions through the through the remote just by pressing the button on the side. Um, adding uh, Xfinity, you know, um, uh, integration as well, and then uh, looking out to the future to have a, you know, more of a, um, a, a nice, um, uh, you know, homegrown uh, voice solution that we're working on as well. Mm, very good. You know how hard it is to not just respond nice to everything. <laughs> nice. That's nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've, you've created yeah. a monster. Yeah. Um, so, so that brings us to uh, the the other. I guess one in order would be the June announcement with the OS 8.8 mm-hmm. uh, software um, update for yeah. the nice slash Alon control system. Um, what all went into that? I'm sure quite a bit. So that was a huge release. I mean, it was one of those things where you know uh, that 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 release was in beta for I think it was five months. It was a large large release and. You know, we did. It, it was big in, t- in two different fronts. It was big on the on the user side of things, but also on the installer side of things. We did some some uh, uh, just a lot of work under the hood, uh, but also a lot of work that, that's user facing. So under the hood, one of the big things that was uh, I call it a pain point for our integrators and dealers was uh, we were we were Windows based, uh, and so if you are if you're on a Mac, you had to use an emulator. So now we are cross-platform all, all the way through. So now you can you can use Mac or PC. That's a, I think that's a 
pretty important function for for our um, our integrators. But also, um, you know, it's, it was the the entire configuration software was rebuilt from the ground up. Uh, we kept it familiar and unique. I mean, familiar and and uh, for for those users who have been used to our configuration software, we didn't want to change it dramatically. But under the hood. It's completely different. Um, so we've made it a lot easier for, for dealers to be able to install systems, more intuitive, leaving it with enough familiarity so they, could, they don't have to learn something completely new. Um, things like backups and restore, uh, where, where if you were going up to a, a new system or a backup would take, you know, take a while and sometimes, but now it's all over the air so we can do it very quickly. So again, making things easier for our integrators to be able to install and deploy systems but also manage those systems as well. So we've made changes to our management software. So our, our, our control system management software has also been updated. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work went into that. On the user side, uh, uh, a couple of areas that we really focused on for this release was one of the things that we did was we, we have partnered with Autonomic on, on our streaming solution. So Autonomic now, um, we have a, a, a ground up custom built user interface for Autonomic that we believe is the best in the business. It, it offers the most flexibility for users. It offers the easiest path to music, the few, fewest touches to music, um, some unique features that, that we have actually built in only to our system where we can uh, globe, do global searches across the, you know, the different platforms. So again, you know, one, of the, one of the most important features for an end user is the audio streaming um, experience that they have in their home. It's one of the leading things that an integrator goes in with is audio and music. As we know, that's how we lead into these these type of uh, installations where a, a user comes to, to a dealer and says, I want to have whole home audio. Well, hey, by the way, do you want these other things? And it tacks on, but streaming is always a big part of that, right? So we want to make sure that the solution that we provided with the 8.8 software was hands down the best, right? So now it's going to be really, really uh, convenient, easy for users to be able to find their music, play their music, make it easy, fewest touches to music, just a great experience for streaming as, as you know, iOS phone-like or Android phone-like as possible as you can get with an integration like this. Um, so that's exciting. We've also um, updated our, our, our utilities subsystem. So one of the things that we built out uh, over the last few years is our utility subsystem. So to be able to manage things like uh, power devices um, in the home, PoE switches directly from, from the system. We've added now a partnership with Home Connect, which is, uh, which is a, an, uh, an alliance of um, appliances to be able to control those systems in the home. So we've added that to our utility subsystem. We've added additional PoE switches so uh, dealers can give homeowners the ability to cycle power, for example, on a device that may have locked up. Uh, and that's all they can do. We don't want to give a ton of control because then that can only get you into trouble if the wrong person's messing with it. But dealers have the ability to customize and give only the control they want uh, to the homeowner uh, to be able to reboot a TV without having to roll a truck or you know, reboot a, a music server, for example, whatever the case might be, while having to roll a truck and, and the user has their, their situation fixed within, you know, 30 seconds, it's all done, they're ready to go. So again, a lot of stuff under the hood, some, some, some great stuff for our, for our users, um, but um, it's a, it was a big release. We're adding a little bit more to it here at Cedia, a, little, a few more uh, features here and there. Um, but uh, yeah, really excited about, about what's to come there as well. Today's episode of Residential Tech Talks is brought to you by NICE, the global manufacturer of smart home security and building automation solutions. NICE is bringing together 30 years of innovation with award-winning products from Elan, Speakercraft, and Panamax to create a holistic ecosystem for builders, integrators, and consumers. Learn more about how you can create one home with one solution at go.nice for you.com backslash RTT. And then one of the categories that, uh, frankly is, I think the, the most popular right now, even if everyone's not doing it, but you're, you're in light control, which is not only lighting, but you're, you're into the shades and the shades are such an important category in our industry. Um, and, and, uh, you, you name them sun shades by nice, which, um, it's interesting because, you know, just generically we call them motorized shades or blinds and sunshades is just a nice, it kind of rolls a little bit off the tongue. It's nicely done there. And uh, um, what makes your your sh roller shading uh, solutions um, 
special, I guess. Well, in the yeah, we industry. quite a few things. So again, first of all, we're we're really excited about this about this launch as well. This is um, this is in the DNA of Nice. So one of the things that that you know um, is important to note is that the, the motors that we're using are not new. We didn't just develop these motors. These have been these have been part of the Nice uh, portfolio for many years. And as uh, with the acquisition of Nice and bringing us into into the family. Um, are from Nice, excuse me, bring us into the family. We have this, this, the, the motor, the motor, the, the shade motor is available to us to be able to uh, develop this really great line of sunshade. So it starts with the motors. Uh, the motors are super quiet, ultra quiet motors. Um, you know, people that hear them are, are, are actually surprised by how quiet they really are. So um, that's obviously a very important thing uh, within the home. You don't want to have you know loud motors going up and down. It's kind of you know, kind of annoying and jarring. So. That's really important to note. Again, these motors are not something that we went out and sourced or bought. These are these are again part of the nice DNA, which makes makes it you know um, an exciting uh, solution for us. But beyond that, just what we're offering for for the homeowner and what they can do. So we have the, the, the widest variety of options for homeowners. We can do uh, we have the, the most powerful motors on the market, so we can do really uh, larger shades. So some shades that might have to be broken up in some cases. In, in the case of our sun shades, they don't have to be broken up. We can do much wider. Again, depends on the material. Don't want to give a specific width because if it's a heavier material, then that's going to make a difference. But we can do the widest shades uh, on the market uh, because we have the most powerful motor uh, in that in that category, the most powerful DC motor. But we can also do things like bottom up shades. Uh, again, those are becoming more and more, um, uh, you know, desired in the marketplace. We can do angled shades. So if you've got windows that are at an angle, we can bring those up you know, bottom up from the, from the angle. Uh, we can do exterior, the ability to do exterior motors, exterior shades. So we really have the whole package uh, available to, to, to homeowners to be able to make the, the widest choices that, they, that, they, that they'd want to make with, with the shading solution. Um, and of course, it doesn't help that we, we are, or hurt, excuse me, that we are competitively priced, uh, very competitively mm -hmm. priced compared to what's also out there on the market. And we're easy to work with. So that's um, another benefit for, for our integrators. And and a variety of power options as well. So you right. So we can do we can do battery motors. We've got uh, DC motors. We can do RF motors, wired. We have all the variety that you might need. Uh, so if you're doing battery, you can do you know for for retrofit, but you can also if you're doing battery in a, in a non retrofit application that works as well. Uh, wired motors, RF motors, um, everything that you would need to be able to to meet you know all the needs of, of the different uh, the different uh, installations that are out there. Yeah, you mentioned the outdoor, and then that, that's just in the past few years, I think, become such a popular option in the shades category because folks have, you know, probably post-COVID moved a lot of entertaining outside, and you want to be able to make those rooms somewhat contained and block the, the sun uh, directly hitting you at certain times of day and um, and how outdoor TVs, that sort of thing. So um, nice that yeah. you have that flexibility as well. Definitely. And again, not, not only for outdoor uh, spaces necessarily, but also for covering windows from the outside. That's a great way to save energy. Um, and, and, you know, if you've got those on the outside, you're saving a lot more energy if those are the, on the inside because because you can block more UV, more, more sun. So, you know, there's, a, there's an energy savings benefit to it as well. But there is the, obviously the benefit of outdoor spaces being able to, you know, if you've got a pergola or if you've got an area outside, you can close that off with shades. Um, you know, we can do rails so they're, they're perfectly, you know, so they're not going to be blowing in the wind. We can do horizontal. So if you want to cover the top of something, so, you know, really giving, giving the ability to, to, to anywhere you might need a shade, uh, yeah. nice, nice has you covered. Well, and then that brings us to our most recent introduction, which was a biggie, um, your audio solutions and it, mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of talking about what has been branded speaker craft, um, and, and it's being rebranded as, as nice audio. Um, so there's a lot to cover, like I said, so take us through from the small aperture on through to the, you know, in ceiling and uh, amplifiers, all that stuff. Sure. Sure. Yeah. We'll start with the, the small aperture speakers. So one of the areas that, so first to begin with, you know, we, we, we our commitment to the audio category, you know, we want to make sure that we have, uh, the, the full breadth of products that somebody who's installing speakers would need so they don't have to go to different manufacturers or suppliers to get the different needs. And so we want to make sure that we are, you know, best in class and make sure that we have everything that, that a, an integrator installer needs to put into, a, into a, uh, an installation. So we're looking at, or we have just, uh, just launched the small aperture speakers. So these are 
uh, four and three quarter inch speakers, so small opening uh, to meet the aesthetic of a small small aperture lighting system. Uh, so these these um, you know we wanted to balance the aesthetic, but also make sure that we don't just have something that looks good but doesn't sound very good. So we've created a small aperture speaker with an oversized tweeter, um, you know, uh, crossover that gives you you know great response. You're not trying to reproduce frequencies that it's not meant to reproduce. So really making sure that, that the speaker sounds great, but it also looks great. So we have the, we have the round grill or the square grill. So if people you know have different needs for, for, the, for the shape, uh, we have flush mount op options as well. Uh, there's a flush mount kit available. So that's a small aperture speaker, but it's also paired with the small aperture subwoofer that has the same size opening. It's custom built from the ground up to subwoofer. Both speaker and, and subwoofer also are custom built from the ground up for uh, to, to really have the best aesthetic, but also have the best sound that we can possibly get out of a four and a quarter, a four and three quarter inch speaker, which by the way, sounds really good. I mean, it, it's surprising how good this little speaker sounds. And the sub, subwoofer mounts into a single ceiling joist, and then it has a tube port that comes into the ceiling, and it just all you see is that three inch, or th four and three quarter inch opening uh, with the same, same round or square grill, so you don't have to have a different size grill for the sub and the speaker. Um, so those, again, those are optimized together. The, the sub itself, rich, deep, rich bass, but in the same way has a crossover that allows it to only reproduce those frequencies that it's intended to reproduce. So the sub is doing its job. The speakers are doing their job. They're not trying to do each other's job. And then that all gets paired with or, or, or married with a um, uh, four-channel amplifier, uh, which is optimized for use with those systems. But, again, all this stuff can be used standalone. You don't have to use this amplifier with these speakers, but it's meant to be uh, installed as a system. So, um, you know, it's easy to install. Uh, it's, it's dip switches on the back of the, of the, of the, of the, of the unit to control uh, what, what size speaker, what power uh, requirements you might need so that you're not trying to tune DSPs and tune the room and, and make it complicated for most people who really, a lot of people don't know how to, how to do that effectively. So we make it dead easy for people to tune, tune the room and be able to, to manage their, their system without having to do a lot of, a lot of uh, a lot of hoops through uh, through through programming and control. So um, again, it's a it's a system that's optimized to be used with you know whole house audio system as well. So again, it can be used with the control system. It's got uh, triggers, and so you can use it with another system as well. So the VR or or the nice audio systems that, that are already in place to be able to to, to, to you know work in, in conjunction with a whole house audio system. Because again, this is intended for spaces like kitchens or bathrooms or areas where you have small apertures. And they, although you know to be frank. A lot of areas of the house are going to this size fixture, right? So it's not just using the kitchens and the bathrooms. You're seeing them in living rooms and great rooms and places like that. So it's becoming more and more important for, for the aesthetic to be able to, to, to have this sort of solution in those homes. So that's the, the small aperture uh, program. We also have, uh, we have uh, a, a newly uh, refreshed um, ceiling speaker the, with, the, with the tweeter array and the, uh, the adjustable uh, woofer, uh, you know, pivoting woofer and pivoting tweeter, uh, revoiced, reimagined uh, to be able to offer that as part of our, of our, our audio solution. Um, the MK3 speakers from, from NICE, um, the for, formerly from the Speakercraft uh, line, of course. Uh, so again, excited about those. Great sounding speaker, really excited about, about you know, getting those in, into people's hands and, and, and hearing the difference. And then the last area, um, Start, you know, continuing this rounding out of the of the audio solution is, is the the, the soundbar that we just recently launched. It's a three channel soundbar, uh, great sounding with uh, aluminum aluminum uh, uh, cones, and it sounds great. Sounds um, you know, reproduce. It's great sound for you know for for a small media room, for example. It's not necessarily intended for a large theater, of course. It's meant for a small media room uh, areas where you have secondary televisions, places like that. So again, really a, a renewed uh, commitment to the audio category, and we're you know we're 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 going to continue to develop this category out, uh, all under the nice brand. And so this is an area that we think is you know it's important to the to the channel, and want to make sure that we are supporting it as well. And what what is the, you know, the value of the former Speakercraft technology? Uh, is there an ingredient still? within the DNA of these products that sort of speaks to people that maybe were fans of speaker craft. Um, yeah, brand. absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same, you know, the same group of people that have been doing it for, for the last several years. Um, you know, things like, um, you know, the technology that, that, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the tweeter array that can be pivoted, um, you know, we're continuing that sort of legacy of, of things in, in upcoming products, um, being able to, you know, uh, you know, the AIM, uh, you know, what we call the AIM series, being able to AIM 
those speakers, but the sound quality as well is the same, right? We're, we're continuing the legacy of the sound quality to make sure that we have, you know, the, the best sounding speakers. It, you know, at the end of the day, when, when, when you have a speaker that's not, doesn't have a grill on it, really the only person that's going to see that is us and the installer. Homeowners rarely going to see, they want it to, to fade away into the background. So it can look really cool and they do look really cool. And that's always important because, you know, we all want those to look, you know, uh, we, we love the look of a, of a great looking speaker. But at the end of the day, when, when, when the homeowner has it in their home and it's sitting up in the ceiling, and it's either just a white grill. Uh, they just want it to sound good. And that's really important for us to make sure that we continue that to make them sound good. And, and really for the homeowner's benefit, um, that that's that's the most important. Uh, you know, we, a speaker that looks great but doesn't sound good. There's no real point in doing that. We want to make sure that they sound great and and continue, as you say, that legacy of speakercraft to be able to to take that into the future with nice that same legacy. And, and you know, you, you mentioned that as well. Similarly, we did a very similar thing with the uh, the Sunfire brand of subwoofers that are now uh, have transitioned into the speakercraft. Um, we've taken that all that legacy of Sunfire sound and brought that into the speakercraft subwoofers that sound unbelievable. Um, so this is again. Uh, you know, uh, an area that we're rounding out uh, the speaker craft now nice uh, subwoofers uh, to have a, a full solution for integrators to be able to, to offer their customers. And we have a variety of subwoofers, just like we had back in the Sunfire days. So to be able to really offer from, you know, from an eight inch to a 12 inch to, you know, a dual amp, uh, you know, giant uh, 12 inch subwoofer, you know, uh, so again, it's a lot of stuff in between. So uh, really, you know, the audio category is, is, is a great one. And, and, and we're really excited to keep keep moving that forward well that that's a lot um to cover but um for folks that who are going to see you in person at cd expo in denver um what what's the experience going to be like there in the booth and what can they kind of expect as far as the presentation any secrets that we haven't covered that they might want to find out about in person great question so so cd 2023 marks the complete rebrand of Speakercraft, Panamax, and the Nice, excuse me, the Elan brand into the Nice branding. So when you walk into our booth at CD, it's going to be Nice branded. Uh, the other brands are, you know, have, have, have faded away into the sunset, but not their quality, not their legacy, not their, you know, it's all the same product. It's all the same great um, uh, team that's working on these products. Uh, but now we have, uh, you know, it, the, the booth will be Nice branded. It'll look uh, like a nice booth. Um, and, and it will, the, the, the important thing to note there is that we now have the ability to, uh, to get behind one brand and, and that, that just doesn't relate to the getting behind one brand in the channel, but really into the, into the end user. So the end user, uh, you know, if you are a, a nice dealer, you know, we're not trying to, you know, um, go to market with a Speakercraft brand, a Panamax brand, an Elan brand, we're going to market with one strong brand that doesn't just include those three categories, but a lot of other categories as well. So giving, you know, a little bit more, a lot more benefit to our, our dealers to be able to talk about those products uh, to their customers. So uh, again, the rebrand this year at, at CDA is sort of the, the, the culmination of the last 12 months where we announced it uh, at CDA last year that we were going to do this, did this over time. Uh, now, now it's done and complete. Well, that's a, a great summary, Jeff, and uh, it's it's always nice to have a preview so that when we speak in person, we can just kind of say, hey, that's what we talked about. Here it is, uh, you know, piece of hardware that we can uh, see, in, you know, up close and, and try it out. And especially that remote sounds really exciting to see, see how far it's come. Um, and uh, I look forward to saying hello there in Denver. So yeah, um, likewise. thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. You bet. Anytime. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeff Shaw is Vice President of Product Management for Nice North America. You can learn more about his company at go.niceforyou.com or come to CD Expo 2023 in Denver, September 7th through the 9th and check the company out in person. And that wraps up today's show, which was produced by Residential Tech Today, IPW, and Pretty Easy Podcast. Please check out prettyeasypodcast.com if you want professional and affordable production help on your own podcast. And if you're new to Residential Tech Talks, please subscribe to the podcast wherever you watched or listened to this episode. Also, check out all the latest residential tech news at our magazine's website, restechtoday.com, where you can also subscribe to the print or digital magazine and to our Tuesday and Friday email newsletters. Finally, if you're headed to CD Expo, please find me on the show floor and Tell me what you think about the magazine and most of all this podcast. Until next time, please stay safe 
Stay inspired and let us know if you have a great story to tell.